why this mummified child's DNA is so unique. High up in the Andes, an unsettling mystery has been frozen in time for centuries. When researchers explored the mountains, they had no idea they would discover a mummified child whose DNA would reveal the truth about the Inca people's ancient rituals. What secrets made this child's DNA so unique, and how did the mummy go unnoticed for so long? Before we get right into it, let us know in the comments. How do you think the body stayed intact for so long? The Haunting Fate of the Inca, Lulalaco of Children, and the Incan Ice Maiden In 1999, Johann Reinhard discovered the remains of three mummified children entombed in a shrine that had stayed undisturbed for over 500 years. The Uyayaco burial site was located near the summit of the 6,739-meter-high Uyayaco volcano in Argentina. The mummies, known as La Doncella, the maiden, La Niña de Reo, the lightning girl, and El Niño, the boy, have captivated the world with their haunting story. The maiden, a teenage girl, has become infamous as the Uyayaco maiden, or Inca ice maiden. As the mummies were unearthed, experts were astounded by their phenomenal preservation. Dr. Emma Brown from the Department of Archaeological Sciences at the University of Bradford praised their phenomenal preservation, and they've been called the best-preserved mummies in the world. The children's bodies were so well-preserved that they seemed to be merely asleep. This incredible level of preservation allowed researchers to conduct detailed technical analysis, revealing the ancient ritual of Capacocha, a practice of human sacrifice that was prevalent during the reign of the Inca Empire. The international team of researchers ran forensic tests to analyze the chemicals found in the children's hair, and they did not expect what they discovered. In the final months of their lives, all three children had consumed alcohol and cocoa leaves, substances reserved for the elite and often used in Incan rituals. According to historical records, these substances were specifically reserved for the elite and they were also used in the spiritual practices of the Incas. The story of the Inca ice maiden took a darker turn when scientists analyzed DNA from her hair, long braided locks, which were longer than those of the younger victims. Because hair grows about a centimeter a month and remains unchanged thereafter, Tests on her hair revealed that her cocoa consumption increased sharply a year before her death. This dramatic change suggests that she was selected for the sacrifice around that time, and her life was forever altered. As researchers dug deeper, they discovered that the maiden's diet had also had a significant transformation. The Incan Ice Maiden's Diet She had transitioned from a simple potato-based peasant diet to one rich in maize and animal protein, perhaps llama meat. This change in diet, combined with the increased cocoa consumption, shows that the young girl was groomed for the sacrifice. It's believed that the Incas selected girls like the maiden for their physical and spiritual qualities, often choosing those who were considered particularly attractive or gifted. The Incas even had a system in place to find these young women, taking them from their families and preparing them for their fate. The data from her DNA analysis also revealed the timeline of the maiden's final year. Her coca consumption spiked dramatically 12 months before her death, and again six months later. In the last few weeks of her life, the maiden ingested large amounts of alcohol, suggesting that she was heavily sedated before being taken to the volcano. This sedation, combined with the cold and isolation of the mountain, would have ensured a quiet and peaceful death. According to Dr. Brown, there was no sign of violence on the three mummies. The Inca Ice Maiden, in particular, was very well looked after. Seen as she had a good layer of fat, beautifully groomed hair, and beautiful clothes. On the other hand, the other two children had less alcohol and coca in their system than the Inca Ice Maiden. This is probably because she was older, more aware, and harder to calm. Researchers believe she may have needed more to keep her still and help her accept what was happening. The younger ones didn't need as much, probably because they didn't struggle and were quiet. The fact that there were no signs of violence, injuries, or struggle showed that the entire sacrifice process wasn't rushed. Other sites showed children with head wounds or broken bones, but these three were left to fall asleep and never wake up. Either the ritual had been perfected 
or these children accepted their fate more quietly than most. But why were children sacrificed? The Dark Rituals of the Inca Empire The reason behind it all goes back to what the Inca believed. They thought this kind of sacrifice would please the gods and bring blessing to the people. Families who gave up their children were honored, and the children themselves were believed to become divine. They were thought to speak to the gods on behalf of the village. These rituals didn't happen just anywhere in the mountains. They took place on mountain summits, in harsh cold, where the air was thin and deadly. That isolation kept the children's remains intact for centuries. While much of the Inca culture was destroyed by the Spanish, these high-altitude burial sites stayed hidden. They were too remote for looters or soldiers to reach. At first, the stories of the ritual practices sounded like myths. Spanish chroniclers, writing down what they saw and heard during the conquest of the Inca Empire, described strange rituals and lavish offerings made to the gods. They spoke of statues forged from gold and silver fabrics made so nicely that they looked impossible to make by hand, and pottery with symbols only the Inca could understand. These treasures were laid before the divine as gifts, placed alongside coca leaves, incense, food, and ceremonial drinks. They even recorded hints of something darker, human sacrifices. But for years, those accounts were dismissed, written off as exaggeration or misunderstanding. It wasn't until centuries later that the truth of those sacrifices would come to light. The Mountain Spirit's Demands In 1954, deep in the Chilean Andes, looters climbing the peak of El Plomo stumbled upon the frozen body of a young boy, resting at about 17,000 feet. He had been left there, fully dressed and preserved by the cold, as if he had had only just fallen asleep. Ten years later, another body was discovered near the top of Mount El Toro. This time, a young man frozen in time at nearly 20,000 feet close to the border between Chile and Argentina. Then, in 1985, yet another child was found, just seven years old, his body tucked on the slopes of Aconcagua, the tallest mountain in the Western Hemisphere. These weren't random deaths, and they felt like pieces of an old puzzle scientists began to see a pattern. These children were definitely not victims of misadventure. What the Spanish had once written off as odd rituals now had physical proof. So in the 1990s, researchers turned their full attention to the summits. And that's when the real breakthroughs began. Expeditions led to the discovery of more mummies, astonishingly well-preserved, lying on top of mountains that almost no one dared to climb in modern times. The most famous were found on Ampato in Peru and Yuyayaco in Argentina. But there was one unsettling question. Why would anyone build ceremonial structures or perform sacrifices in places so extreme? Why risk everything to climb these deadly altitudes, carrying children and offerings to places where even breathing is a struggle? Spanish writers never fully understood the answer, but over time, archaeologists made sense of it. Mountains, across much of the Andes, were believed to be alive. People thought they could think, feel, and act. More than that, mountains were seen as powerful beings who controlled the weather. They were responsible for the rain that fed the rivers, the snow that melted into crops, and the storms that threatened or protected them. To people whose lives depended on the land, that belief made perfect sense. Rain often began in the mountains, rivers had their source from there, and clouds and lightning gathered around the peaks, so the mountains held power that no human could match. Hence, offerings were made to the mountains to bring rain or stop drought. And that's where the children came in. It turned out the Incas actually didn't invent these beliefs, they inherited them. Long before they arrived, Smaller communities already believed in the mountain spirits, but when the Incas expanded their territory, they took those local beliefs and built shrines at summits where locals had once just gazed up in awe and no one else had dared to go. Now the Inca ice maiden, La Niña del Rey, and the El Niño mummies are housed in the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology in Salta, Argentina. If you enjoyed this exploration of the DNA and history of the Yuyuyaco children and the Inca Ice Maiden, then hit the like button.
to stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analysis on these ancient people. Then subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos.